procedures could go from a second they can go from one to maybe even 10 seconds and she will have a conversation if she's having a conversation she could have a seizure at the same time she's talking and she'll just pause and she'll stare but she'll have a stare that it's like she's seeing right through you she's not focused her her sight is just beyond like if it's out of this world she's not looking directly at you she will pause eventually once her seizure is over she'll come back and she'll either repeat what she was saying or she'll say oh I'm sorry I didn't I don't I don't know where we left off or what is it that you were saying Kate used to dance folklorico and Kate had a real bad episode where she was gonna fall off the stage and um, grandma said you know what there's something wrong with Kate you need to get further uh, testing throughout four years we would do tons of research and with the doctors in the school and I couldn't get anywhere how are they gonna pinpoint what Kate has just based on staring spells or they could say, oh, maybe it was too hot, maybe it was dehydration. Um, so it was always something else. It was never linked to epilepsy. That day that I took her in with her doctor, um, Kate had like 50 episodes within an hour. And so if you think about it, 50 episodes, um, one, two, three seconds each during one hour, you know, it's, it's a lot. If you think about it. And I'll go back four years, and that's what she's been going through. That's, um... Her family had lost insurance unexpectedly, which is usually what happens. This was during the um, economic depression, and she came to us, and she was on two medications, having lots of stomach pain, nausea and having daily episodes where in the middle of conversation she would just completely freeze when i'm examining her the type of absence seizures which are also historically called petite mal seizures that kate suffers from they're very subtle you're about to cross a street a busy street and all of a sudden the light switch goes off in your brain and you have you have completely lost awareness of everything around you. You, for all intensive purposes, have gone into an extremely deep sleep. She secluded herself. She didn't want to be around um, her friends, around family. And I would give her that, you know what, maybe you do need your moment. But that moment went from a few minutes to hours and days and weeks. We have families every single day who walk in through our doors uh, of our clinics who tell us these horror stories of not being able to see a pediatric neurologist, not being able to see somebody with epilepsy expertise. That lack of having an answer absolutely snowballs the concern, anxiety, and complete futility that I imagine a lot of our parents must feel. We have been blessed with uh, Jessica Lowe, who's really done a fantastic job with our ketogenic diet program. Care and Cure actually really helped um, develop our program. They've given our um, clinic support to start the diet therapy program and offer this diet to families just as Kate. The ketogenic diet, ketogenic diet, it seems to work. I don't understand how. I'm not a doctor. To this day, we still don't understand as a medical scientific community, what is it about ketosis that has this anti-seizure therapeutic effect in the brain. We've only been in it for about two months and within the same week that we changed her uh, diet, um, she stopped seizuring, not 100%, but from having over 100 seizures, Kate started having either one or two throughout the day. And there's days that she has no seizures. So it's, it's a tremendous improvement to see that you know, food, food can make a difference. These are what we call them, she calls them the Bibles. Yeah, she, the wife does everything. Uh, I, I probably could get teary eyed. <laughs> <laughs> because it's amazing what she does. Dr. Moltani and uh, Jessica were updating me about how well you've been doing. I'm really, really thrilled. I would call them excellent results. I, it makes me very happy for Kate. I can, you know, I have seen not only her seizures improve, but Kate as well, so it makes me very happy. 
So Kate is now a vibrant, wonderful young lady, and I think she has a bright future in, in front of her. Uh, we were basically, we keep telling ourselves we have our Katie back, how, how we were four years ago. She's, she's going back little by little. There's other families that are not, that they don't even, they're just starting. The process, oh man, it's, it's a long process. And it breaks down a lot of people. There's still a lot of, a lot of people in the population who, who don't have great care and who have had issues accessing, I think, especially pediatric neurology services. I actually don't know where these patients would, would be able to go should this place not be available to them. This was made possible directly because of Care and Cure funds and the Epilepsy Foundation. And what I respect the most about the Epilepsy Foundation and the Care and Cure is that they really do believe that every child in our community who's suffering from seizures deserves to have immediate access to expertise, compassionate expertise, knowledgeable expertise. The face of epilepsy can be on the surface, but when you dig deep, you can see how deep its impact is affecting the entire individual and the family. I mean, I think you can sense the release the family has had with the success. And as a physician, when you walk into the room, it's just, it's uh, tangible. And it's a great feeling to have.